using your mind constructively, expressing your emotions effectively, being creatively involved with those around you, and being concerned about your physical, psychological, and spiritual environments. Wellness is a healthy balance of the mind, body, and spirit that results in an overall feeling of well-being. Wellness can also be described as the constant conscious pursuit of living life to its fullest potential. Wellness is a direction in progress toward a never higher potential of functioning. Wellness can be described as a state that combines health and happiness. Wellness is viewed as a quest for spiritual wholeness. It is the ability to apply your knowledge, motivation, commitment, behavior, self-management, attitude, and skills towards achieving your personal fitness and health goals. The spiritual dimension of wellness involves seeking meaning and purpose in human existence. It is the process of getting in touch with your spiritual core. The Chinese word for catastrophe is the same as their word for opportunity. So every challenge, every difficulty has to be treat, treated as an opportunity. It is important to lead a lifestyle that is respectful of our environment. Environmental wellness is an awareness of the precarious state of the earth and the effects of your daily habits on the physical environment. Financial wellness is an intricate balance of the mental, spiritual, and physical aspects of the bunny. Social wellness emphasizes the interdependence with others and nature. The occupational dimension of wellness is involved in preparing for work in which one will gain personal satisfaction and find enrichment in one's life through what we do every day. The intellectual wellness of is, dimension of wellness is to encourage creative, stimulating mental activities. The medical wellness is an approach for delivering health care that considers the multiple influences on a person's health. The emotional dimension of wellness emphasizes an awareness and acceptance of one's feelings. It allows you to be aware of and accept a wide range of feelings in yourself and others. It is striving to meet emotional needs constructively. It's maintaining good mental health, a positive attitude, high self-esteem, and a strong self-image. The emotional dimension of wellness involves recognizing, accepting, and taking responsibility for your feelings. The greatest wealth is health. The WHO said it is not absence of disease as it was pointed out again and again yesterday. Mere absence of disease is not health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. I would say, add to that is a social, emotional and spiritual well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Diseases of the soul are more dangerous and more numerous than those of the body. Water, air and cleanliness are the chief articles in my pharmacopoeia, said Napoleon too. You know, most of our illnesses problems are arising out of polluted water, polluted air, and unhygienic style of living. Even Napoleon said those days, if you have health, you probably will be happy. And if you have health and happiness, you have all the wealth you need. The I in illness is isolation. If you are living alone, you want to avoid people, that means you are not well. And the crucial letters in wellness are V. That is, together, we create wellness. In a disordered mind, as in a disordered body, soundness of health is impossible. 
that Cicero said that. So, we have to have a healthy body and a healthy mind. Then only you can say we are wholly healthy. I think you might dispense with half your doctors if you would only consult Dr. Sun more. That is sunlight. They have been there from uh, since the ages of Surya Namaskara, sun salutation, as they call it. And I know of a friend of mine who used to, he had lived for years, Sun Yogi Mahashankar. I have tested him. I have taken him to Kailas Manasaro with me, 20,000 feet above sea level, 15 days. He was with me because he was living with me. And even otherwise, he stayed with me. He didn't take food. He didn't take even water. All he needed was sun gazing for half an hour. Any time of the day, he used to go and look at the sun. He says, my system is charged. And when 20 of us went along, I took him actually to test him via Nepal, up to 20,000 feet above sea level. He was wearing only a dhoti and a tundu, like Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi used to wear footwear. He was barefooted always. And up to 20,000 feet, he didn't wear any, no shoes, no warm clothing, just with a dhoti and a towel. Up to that, he was there, and he was going and lying down on the glacier. And the people who were born and brought up there, the Tibetans, they were all fully covered, clothed. And the Westerners who come for photography, they were all surprised, and they, they all took photograph with him. And most of us had high altitude illness. Because, you know, at that altitude, normally anyone will have this headache and all that. But he was the only person who remained healthy. And he was doing acupressure, learned from Dr. Catherine Shah.